Hey everyone, welcome back to the OK Guard Show. I'm Leanna Machino. I'm Staff Sergeant Brian Schroeder. I hope everybody had a wonderful and fulfilling Thanksgiving this yeah. year. I know for me um, and my wife, we were sick yeah. the whole time and just now recovering mm -hmm. from the congestion and the coughing and the phlegm. And I'm sorry, we're Super driving fun. listeners away. You're not, but I do blame you and your wife for getting me sick. Listen. Because I too was sick and so was Sergeant Jonesy who you saw last month interviewing Mike Gonzalez. When you think it's a good idea to just drop oh. in on somebody, maybe rethink, maybe I mean, you give have a text a pool. or a call. He has a pool. It like, was 32 degrees outside. Well, we don't know. do a polar plunge <laughs> at our a, pool. I call it the polar dip. Is that not right? Um, well, polar I mean, plunge. you could polar plunge yeah. to the bottom of our pool right sure. now and just collect all the leaves oh. that, are, that yeah. are there. We don't have a cover. That sounds like work. Yeah, it's totally work. You I, know I mean, what else sounds like work? What's that? Financing. Ooh. Yeah. But that's what we're talking about this month. That's right. With Shay Cockrell. We brought him back. He's our first repeat customer. Hey, hey, Shay. Or guest. Yeah. Um, I thought it was a great episode. Uh, we kind of, we dive into a plethora of things on materialism uh, of the holidays. And yeah, yeah. Do you really need yeah. what you're buying for, or the people that you're buying for? Yeah. You know, and um, we're not discouraging. We're not trying to discourage no. people from shopping or doing nice things for other people. But what's the yeah. value in it? Yeah, it, I, th I thought it was a great episode. Uh, obviously, we love having Shay on. He brings a wealth of knowledge. We also talk about taxes um, that you can prepare for that's coming very quickly within yeah. a couple months. But there's a lot of things you can do at the end of the year um, this year to prepare for that. Yeah, Shay, we're, we're going to have him back Mm -hmm. Again, probably closer to tax season, but mm -hmm. um, just hearing his opinion on, you know, getting yourself into debt over Christmas, over the holidays is a big thing that yeah. Americans really struggle with. And we really talk about some of those things, like you were saying, being present mm -hmm. is sometimes the best present you can yeah. give your family members. Dang. So just keep that in mind. And the whole point of that is because what is an over and you'll hear shortly over a thousand dollars is the average of what people go into debt in addition to their already however much of debt they're in already yeah just from holiday shopping so that's why we wanted to talk about this so hope you guys enjoy and we'll uh we'll see you here in a little bit yeah hey hey shay hey hey <laughs> Hey, hey, we can just use this whole, this is our intro right here. Yeah, this, we don't need to Whatever. record anything. Great. Hey, everybody, welcome to the OK Guard Show. This is uh, great having Shay Cockrell back on our show. Well, hi. Yay. You're our first repeat uh, guest. Offender. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some people might look at it that way, but yeah. we won't. I wouldn't blame them. <laughs> we looked at the numbers, Shay, and from the last episode. Yeah. Real bad. They were yeah. good. They, no, they, they were, were good. good. They were so. good. We got a yeah. lot of good feedback. So good. Wanted to have you back on the show. Talk about. Um, it's good to be back. Holiday season. It's expensive. It is. I've it already is. spent like 150 bucks on presents. None of them were for myself, yet. It's very generous of you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. It's very kind. But I mean, a lot of people will spend a lot of money on Christmas gifts or mm -hmm. food or traveling or a combination of everything, and at the end of the year you almost need that holiday bonus just to be able to pay your bills right. on top of all of the other. And it's, it's not about taking away giving, that opportunity to give, right. but maybe looking at different ways we can give mm -hmm. uh, so that we're not giving our pants at the end of the month trying to pay bills. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, my family and I have an agreement. I'll call them and be like, hey, just making sure we're still on. You're not buying me anything and I'm not buying you anything. But we're going to spend time with each other. Good, good. Because that's happy. invaluable. It time. is time. You, that's something you cannot buy. I have parts of my family that do that too. Yeah, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, and everyone. I feel like everyone gets it. Yes. I don't think anyone would say I'm offended. Yep. That you want but, to spend time with me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> Nay. I don't know. So yeah, I'm gonna dive into that whole idea of if you don't have the money. Find a different way to spend your holiday showing that you care. Buying a gift does not do that. Right. Moving on. Moving on. So the study. Yes. So this is insane. 
Um, looking at some debt statistics during the holiday season, uh, according to a 2018 study by Magnify Money on holiday debt, Americans tackled an average of $1,054 additional debt during the holiday season. Per person. They tacked that much on per person, Yeah. $1,054, just for the holiday season. So, uh, Shay, what are your thoughts on how we can avoid taking on additional debt like that over the holiday mm -hmm. season? Um, well, first of all, that's a problem. Um. <laughs> I mean, average, you're talking a pool of people, and I don't know, it didn't say the number of that they pulled for this, but no, but the does average that, for, of that amount, that's insane. That's a lot of money. That, that is a lot of money. Yep. A lot of money. That um, is a couple mortgages for some people and a few months rent and... Oh, sure. But that's not the total amount somebody would spend. Yeah. That could be in addition to money that they've saved up. Right. Plus going in debt over $1,000. Right. Right. Wow, it's, that's crazy. It's, it's yeah. It's really bad, and it smells of just a budgeting problem in okay. general. So if you're spending a bunch of money and you're attacking on additional, you know, $1,000, $1,100, you, you didn't budget right, mm -hmm. or you uh, just spent too much money to begin with, and I know impulse culture is, is really bad. Mm -hmm. You go out and you see all these marketing things that, oh, that would be cool to have in the house. And instead of, you know, step, taking a step back and, and thinking about it, you just go ahead and buy it. And then, mm -hmm. you know, that those purchases add up and here we are at $1,100. Yeah. Okay. yeah. When you add interest onto that, say it's on a credit card. I mean, and it takes several months to pay that alone plus the interest that you accrued. I mean, I, th I don't think people realize how much interest they're actually paying. Like a $100 thing is really $175 yep. or whatever. Or if you minimum balance the entire time, it's up and up and up. And your $100 gift all of a sudden turned into a $780 present for your child from four years ago. Yeah, it's out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. You saying you're gonna make this average payment mm -hmm. over a period of time will allow you to pay off that amount. Right. But you're really paying almost three times the amount that you're initially going for yeah. in oh, yeah. some cases anywhere from 22 to 28 percent APR that's that's a lot yeah so my assumption is that what's the best way to do that I mean having if you pay for a credit card or you have a credit card you use use it to buy gifts what's the best way to do that make sure you have the money to pay it off the oh, next yeah. month oh yeah um, if you if you're spending on a credit card the plan should be to spend uh, the money to pay it off at the end of the month as soon as you get the bill because you don't want that interest to accrue mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I know some people like to play the points game where they put it on a credit card and then immediately pay it off but you have to make sure you have the money available mm -hmm. or you're gonna get yourself in some trouble yeah I do that but I force myself and sometimes it is painful but I refuse to pay interest on it if I have to pay interest I'm instantly grumpy yep yeah because I did for so long in college and I don't want to do that ever again so yeah because it's essentially paying somebody else to borrow their money yeah is yep. what you're doing which yeah. that's just the exact opposite of what we talked about first time which is it's the exact opposite of retirement yeah uh, the more you're paying interest the less uh, retirement you're getting because you should be putting that money in a into a retirement account so let's say um i haven't saved up because well i did save up but my car had problems and it needed a new transmission and then the insurance won't pay for me to have a new roof after the hail damage obviously caused it so i'm really short on cash and i have to go in debt this holiday season to buy gifts for my family for my friends for my kids how do you recommend i go about doing that if i have no option but to go into debt over christmas um or the holiday season well first i'd i'd recommend you take a step back to see is the money that we're usually spending on Christmas presents uh, does it have to be this way um, are we talking something that's been outlandish for years and years and years that we could and should cut back on or if we're just talking about little amounts of money here um, and you're just trying to buy something small for your kids it, it's kind of a it, it's a sad deal but I know people get into that mm -hmm. If you're in a boat where you have to go into debt like that, um, I would recommend that you 
pay as much as you can um, on on the credit card. Not not sacrificing, you know, food or anything like that. But do what you have to do. Um, but you you do keep in mind you do have options. Um, some good strategies here are. Um, getting a seasonal side job. There are a lot of companies out there that yeah. do hire seasonal mm-hmm. for 10, 15 hours a week. Mm-hmm. Um, Amazon, um, you, see them, you can see them everywhere. I mean, the UPS. And UPS. And yeah, a lot, a lot of, of retail stores. Order, yeah, for, right. Um, what do they do, gift wrapping and yep. yeah. um, stocking and stuff, yep. yeah. So that's, that's a good option. Yeah. Um, and also just remembering priorities. I like that. The idea of spending time is the, the best gift you can give, I think. Yeah. So. I agree. Yeah. Because that's, that's maybe what a lot of it boils down to, like you said, is prioritizing, mm-hmm. whether it's time or prioritizing your money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One way or another. Um, I have, I'm not talented much in making things, but... There, I mean, I could do like a craft thing, right, where it cost me very little, or maybe I already have the supplies in my house, and I custom make something for, you know, my grandma, like, love you, grandma, or something with a picture of me and my puppy and my husband, too. He's a part of my life now, so got to include him. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and she would love that. It would make her heart melt. Those are cool gifts. And yeah. it didn't cost me much at all, and it was more of the time that I put into it. Right. Right. So that's something I would say is if you have the ability to make something or do something for someone, like, you know, little coupons, those are cute. I yeah. think those are awesome. Those are cool. Like, coupon to clean your car. Yeah. I accept those all the time. Just, our address here is 3501. <laughs> <laughs> but. And then cash in on them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you don't have to stand in line beginning at 3 a.m. on Black Friday Oh, yeah. To be able to give a gift like that, mm-hmm. right? Plus, they, they're they more heartfelt. Yeah. They're, they're appreciated more giving and also receiving. Mm-hmm. All right. So if I get a side hustle and I'm able to save a little bit of money to avoid going into debt, um, I've heard about layaway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can you explain kind of a little bit of what layaway is? And is there is it like going into debt? Do I pay interest on something that's in layaway? Well, no, you don't. Okay. Um, layaway can be a good budgeting tool in the sense that you are not swiping a credit card and accruing interest. However, there is a caveat to that. Um, but first, the concept of layaway is you, you pick some items out at your local Walmart, or that's the most popular one that does it. I don't think mm-hmm. Target does it. Um, I know the, the BX does it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, So places like that, they will have a program where you can go in, look at a couple items and say, I want to lay away these. And you can make payments Mm -hmm. on them up until a certain date. And I think uh, usually it's the first or second week in December, so we're we're kind of already rolling up on that. But um, they're effectively helping you budget up to that point. And if you don't make your payments, uh, of course you don't get the items Mm -hmm. you've chosen there are some cancellation fees you have to worry about, and that's the caveat. It's a restocking fee is effectively what it is. Okay. okay. So basically, I just take items up to a, a desk and say, I want to put these on layaway, and then I can make payments once a week, bi-weekly, monthly, however right. I set it up with them. Right. Okay, so essentially that's what you would do with a credit card, but in reverse, mm-hmm. where you have to pay it off first, and then you receive the item, Right. rather than swiping your card, getting the item, and then paying on it. Right, and okay. lay away you're not paying interest, which is the key there. So you're actually paying the price of the item rather than Correct. the price plus. Correct, and that's, up benef- to 30%. And that's beneficial to the, the merchandiser. You may be thinking, what do they have to, what do they have to gain from this? Well, yeah. they're still making sales to a certain part of the population that are wanting to help themselves budget better, yeah. or um, you know, as they're getting money to, I mean, five dollars here, ten dollars there, whatever that looks like, mm-hmm. they can just pay for toys for the kids mm-hmm. or whatever it looks like. Yeah. Is there um, a, a start limit? Like they don't, you can, can you go in in June and say, I want to start, I want to put this on layaway and get it paid off or do we know? Or is that something we should look up? That's a good question. I I'm imagine not, it I'm depends not sure. on the retail, on the store. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. Or even the amount. Mm-hmm. Could I say, I want to lay away this $30 coffee pot? 
There is a, a um, or does that have to be a two hundred dollar or more? No, there there is a minimum limit, but it's not as much as you think. I think it's anywhere from twenty to fifty dollars okay. usually. Mm -hmm. It's not hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Okay. Okay. Cool. And all dependent on the store. Right. So right. Everything else there. So. I, I really good option. Yeah, I think programs like that are great. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, um, a lot of people do their holiday shopping in July, mm -hmm. which if you're doing that, that definitely gives you enough time to be able to pay a little bit each month. Yeah. Rather than trying to scramble mid October, mid November. Yeah. Right. So my case, mid December. I got some to go of them. It's the 25th. Oh, I got to get shopping. Now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thanksgiving or a month this out. Who yeah. likes yeah, Boxing Day no, gifts? You know, there's only three weeks between. Well, really, f but Thanksgiving is very late this year. Mm -hmm. So yep. I've been pushing it off. And then now I'm like, oh, crap. And I do this every year, and every year I tell myself, don't do this. But it goes back to the whole stress of, I, I don't want to back myself into a corner where I'm like, yeah, just, just get it. I'll worry about paying that off later. And I bet a lot of people do that. Mm. The stress of the time, and, um, and they think, oh, I forgot about this person. I need to go get them something. By then, maybe something's marked up. And they're like, well, I got to get it. Mm -hmm. And they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. And that's where the impulse buys start coming in. Yeah. Oh, I see that. Oh, that would be good. And you know, don't do your research on where it's the best price. Yeah. What other options do I have? Yeah. So what about the obligated giver? There's the, the impulse buyer, but then <laughs> obligation giving mm -hmm. is almost an impulse buy in a sure. way, right? Yeah. Oh, they got me this, so I feel like I have to do that in return. Yeah. Um, and if you do that and you start making a list, then, you know... Yeah. <laughs> you have nothing at all in your wallet, right? It's yeah. a very vicious cycle. Um, it's a, it's a good it's a good thought of I want to get this person something or this person something, and you just end up getting everybody something, mm -hmm. and that's that's bad. It's also the along the same vein is the oh they got me something last year, um, or they're going to get me something. I got to make sure it's the same dollar value. That's, yeah. Oh, that's so yeah. rough too. We Christmas or any other holiday. Should not be like that. Yeah, it's it's so it's to kind of toxic yeah. a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on um, my mom's side of the family is pretty big, so we used to um, we haven't done it in a while, but uh, we would draw names and then we set a limit, so everyone would bring one gift and it wasn't this here Uncle Joe here Aunt Nikki here Grandma here Mom Dad cousins and cousins kids and the puppies, it was one gift. What are your thoughts on that? I really like that. Okay. If you're a tight-knit family that mm -hmm. kind of knows everybody in the family, I, I would recommend doing something like that. <laughs> the other side of the coin, too, is if you are in a group that you may not, if you're maybe one of the in-laws or something mm -hmm. and you don't know the family very well, another good option is to play White Elephant because if you can play it by a general gift and uh, kind of play a game with it, mm -hmm. you're not stuck to, oh, I don't know this person I drew. You want to trade me? Um, okay. Which that's kind of kind of defeating the purpose yeah. if you're you're doing that so what is white elephant white elephant yeah is that uh, like also, dirty santa, it's dirty santa. Dirty santa. it's also called dirty santa what's what is it's the same thing it's just more yeah i don't know where that i don't, <laughs> I don't know where that originated yeah, no. from interesting okay but yeah same same white thing elephant. as dirty santa okay. right cool yeah. those yeah. are always fun well and then there's like you get to know people that way yeah. too mm -hmm. yeah especially when you steal gifts sorry denise i did last year my bad but oh. um yeah i've got a, i've got three sisters and a brother and so we opted a long time ago to not do the gift exchange thing and we've done yeah. uh, find something at home that you don't want anymore uh, that's, that's in good yeah, condition yeah, yeah. that's funny yeah. that's some smelly socks so, as I say people don't show up with their underwear like these right. didn't fit <laughs> it's got four holes in them yeah there's a uh, an Oklahoma State Santa Claus that's been passed around about three or four years. Nice. It just keeps coming back up because nobody wants it. Right. Nice. And so is you. So. Well, I, yeah. I'm not <laughs> taking <laughs> sides, but <laughs> my family is. Dang it, Jones is not here to defend himself. Yeah. So good. Anyway, um, that's a really good idea. I never thought so, of something like that. So. Things like that, or even I've heard of people um, taking money that they would give in like a sibling gift exchange mm -hmm. and giving that to a family they yeah. need. So you're still getting that sense, that good feeling of mm -hmm. giving to someone who actually would need it. But, you know, the, the family exchange and the family interaction is also also very important yeah. and good. So. Yeah, I like that. 
Yeah. Because it really, it does come down to being thoughtful of others Mm -hmm. and doing good things for others, Mm -hmm. but without having to break the bank, without having to go into debt or worry about paying your bills Mm -hmm. just to this, just to do something nice for somebody else. How how do you think someone should um, approach that? Like a family member, normally there's a gift exchange, but maybe this year was tight. Well, money brings shame to a lot of people, especially lack thereof. Mm -hmm. So how would you recommend approaching that to someone that you respect, a family, a friend, a colleague, and just putting it out there like, hey, normally, no, we normally do this, but I've had a lot going on. Would love if we just, let's go to lunch instead, or Mm -hmm. let's just high five and wish each other happy holiday season and move on. I mean, what do you do? The that the meal one is actually really good. Yeah. We we do that when we really don't know what to buy somebody because nowadays it feels like everybody has everything. So a meal mm-hmm. is always good. But in a family sense, I, I feel like you should love and trust them enough to be able to say that, hey, it's been a little rough year. Mm-hmm. Um, can we can we do it this way? But if you don't want to go that way, I, I think another good option would be, hey, the family's getting so big, it's getting kind of complicated to do yeah. this. How do you feel about doing it? this way instead yeah, okay. which it's kind of a good also sometimes truthful yeah. uh, excuse to go that way yeah. so. stepping away from a tradition that is costly mm-hmm. and introducing a something I like, yeah I like that idea. yeah traditions are good yeah it is it is it can be expensive yeah <laughs> yes they do your family gets but yeah yeah stepping aside and maybe starting new traditions yeah also especially as new members of the family join and Mm -hmm. they bring their traditions you know so just kind of staying on the that vein of um going into debt and and feeling obligated to buy and um so the average debt of a thousand dollars per holiday shopper um some will pay it off in three to five months and it'll cost them a lot more in, in interest that we talked about so you know going into debt and just being nice is not the right way of going about doing that. But at what point should we as consumers take a step back and look at the materialism that we pay for by borrowing money from other people just to to do that? And how much of what we buy is just stuff we really don't need? It's just mm-hmm. stuff to have stuff. Um, but we're compelled to buy because of what I mean, we're constantly marketed to. Everywhere we go, everywhere you look, yep. everywhere you listen, somebody is trying to sell you something yeah and that impulse is just constantly there to open up and spend money mm-hmm. so right. what, what what do you think are some good ways to to curb some of those behaviors or recognize them uh, with your spending habits well i think you definitely should reassess that every year um even every holiday mm-hmm. trying to the, the materialism and trying not to end up in that kind of vicious cycle, that, that kind of culture. Um, some ways you can catch yourself, seeing yourself do that would be if you are, if you see somebody with an Apple Watch or mm-hmm. a special new phone or, or whatever and you think to yourself, I would want that, and then you go out and do that, mm-hmm. you, you probably are being marketed to more than you think you are, yeah. that kind of stuff. So functionality is key. Um, so, yeah. Do you think, um a trick for me, if I'm, I rarely go to the mall, but if I do and I see something I like, I purposely do not get it right then. I will either continue shopping or leave. And if I continue to think about it and think of how I can make use of it, then I will go back that's a good to one. get it. Yeah, that's yep. good. And a lot of times I do not because I've had buyer's remorse many times and that is a terrible feeling. And then there are things that I've purchased that I'm like, I barely, barely use. And I'm like, well, that was $300. What right. did I do that for? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just sits so, and collects dust. And even yeah. if you try and resell it, maybe $20 yeah. for that item you spent 300 on. Yeah. Yep. So that's, that's a trick that I do to try to curb that materialistic side. I think, yeah, I, that's I, smart. I think everyone would suffer especially if you have if you're near the internet at all or just walking down i mean there's so much advertising everywhere you go you can't hop on your cell phone to 
check email without seeing ads anymore. I mean, especially about <clears throat> what you were just talking about. Yeah, like right now, right. I wonder instantly if there's yes, ads. yes. Yeah. Um, yep. So they're listening, <laughs> but oh, scary. Time. Yeah. So we should <laughs> we should uh, talk about specific things and just see what ads we get later, and then we'll come back and we'll say this is proof. So we, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good test. Yeah. But um, anyway, that's a trick I have for kind of curbing that. That's a good one. Uh, doesn't always work, but it does a lot of times. Most of the time, it does work. Yeah. Um, it's better than just being a complete shut in. Yeah. And not being tuned into anything yeah. that's going on. Yeah. Because right. it's it's almost impossible to go any length of time without seeing, hearing, or being marketed to in one way or another. Oh, yeah. yeah. So let's talk taxes. Yay. So there are a lot of write-offs. Brian and I were talking about, like, he just bought a house um, last month. You closed, right? Yeah. Well, congratulations. So Thank you very much. Very excited. He's My a address party. is one. Yeah. He has a pool. <laughs> Pool party's happening sometime. We'll send out the address in the show notes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's actually my neighbor's pool, but I have a hole in the fence. That yeah, yeah. We can counts. get easy access to. <laughs> yeah. That's what pork chop goes through. It's yeah. his one. Pork chop's um, my dog. Yeah, it's a clarify. He's also a vegetarian. Not pork chop, Brian. Yeah. Oh. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Good clarification. Yeah. Pork chop definitely is not. So there are a lot, there's a lot of money that goes unclaimed, I guess, every year. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot as in billions, apparently. So who qualifies for tax breaks? And do you have to make a certain amount to qualify for those write-offs and stuff? And let's talk, I, we could talk standard versus itemizing um, because to write anything off, you have to itemize, right? Not necessarily. Okay, let's talk that through. So first of all, billions mm -hmm. and billions. I would say that's probably true. Um, most people don't know that there are some deductions that are available to them, mm -hmm. and sometimes people are just scared to take them because, oh, I'm going to get audited, or mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not sure this is right, so I'm just going to stay you know, on the safe side. And sometimes that's right, sometimes that's wrong, mm -hmm. wrong, wrong. Um, so in general, that is a very, very broad question when it comes to income levels. Generally, okay. it should be no. Um, there are certain deductions that apply to everybody. There are certain phase outs mm -hmm. based on how much money you are making. Mm -hmm. um, when we're talking itemized versus standard deduction, so standard deduction this past year for, for 18 and, and with the new tax law had been doubled. Mm -hmm. So for singles, it's now 12,200. Head of household, it's 18,350. And for married, it's the double of the single. So it's 12, uh, I'm sorry, 24,400. Yeah. Okay. So to itemize, you have to have more itemized deductions than you do the standard. So you mm -hmm. get one or the other. Mm -hmm. And certain certain deductions in the itemized category include things like um, charitable contributions, state and local tax mm -hmm. up to ten thousand um, dollars, medical and dental. But there's a ten percent AGI threshold for that. So, in other words really look at what you've got because I didn't do any taxes last year for um, some of my married clients mm -hmm. and and they did not itemize at all uh, which is rare usually you yeah. get a bunch of people that are itemizing not this time around yeah because some of those deductions fell into other credits and other boats so it helped mm -hmm. them more mm -hmm. I, I heard with the tax changes that a lot of people didn't get as much as they are used to and it was kind of a shocking thing right is there a way to avoid that shock happening happening this next year or is it because i know a lot of things changed right right from 2017 to 18 right yeah mm -hmm. correct so i lost a year so i'm still like yeah. yeah so what are some ways that people what are some common ones that people don't think of like hey i can i can count this toward my taxes and get that written off Sure. So, or stuff that I can do by December thirty first. You know, like donate all your money to this, and then like you know, uh, have as many children as you can in the next five yeah. years. Right. <laughs> Dogs unfortunately don't count. They do uh, not count. They're expensive. Why don't they count? Yeah. yeah you know how much I spent on my dog. You get health insurance for them, right? Right. It's true. Mm -hmm. 
we'll we've got we've got yeah. a great Dane, so we we know. Oh man, well, it's, it's a lot. Pups. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, what what are some things that we should think about doing if we're looking to hopefully get a better or not owe as much um, next year? Some things that we can do within in the last in the next thirty five days. As for deductions going into the end of year, it really depends on how much money you're making and what bracket you're in. Okay. Because um, putting more money into a charity and um, some some individuals try to pay their mortgage tax, or, I'm sorry, their their mortgage um, interest mm. up yeah, front, and they try to accelerate mm -hmm. that. Well, again, with the standard deduction being doubled, it may not benefit you. Okay. So you really need to look and see what your what your current deductions are mm -hmm. and where you're wanting to be. Some good, other good options that are not in the atomized realm are putting more money into your um, your retirement, mm -hmm. um, putting more money into your health savings account if, if you have the option to okay. increase. Some people do, some people don't. I assume there's a limit? There is. Okay. Um, okay. It recently changed, so I don't want to tell you wrong. I th we can uh, throw some links in the show notes. I believe it's so around 2500 I think. Okay. okay. Um, but some of the other big credits that people like to talk about mm -hmm. are, um, so the child tax credits changed, which that's changed last year. So this year you've got, um, if you're a qualifying child, you've got $2,000. If you're under the age of 17, a qualifying dependent is $500. So those are, those are good ones. So you need to look and see who is dependent, who is not. There are rules on that. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to claim your dog as a dependent. That's that's not good. Okay. But he, he depends, depends on me. <laughs> he's a, a dependopotamus, as my husband taught me that word. <laughs> Probably should cut that. Anyway, continue. Not like that. Okay. Um, some that apply to certain families, the adoption credit is a good one. That's okay. a lot of money that can come back if you adopted this year. Okay. So I'm sure during that process, if you adopted, they told you about that, mm -hmm. hopefully. Um, first time home buyer. That's another one. Go on. So Only first time? There, there are certain credits. The okay. big the big one is first time home buyer. Okay. But you had to have known about it going in. Known about the first time home buyer. Right. First time home buyer credit. Okay. Right. Okay. So there are certain, we, we have it at, for our house. Uh, you have to be, for the state of Oklahoma, you can be in a certain county mm -hmm. and had to have applied with it going into your, your home when you, when you purchased your home. You can't just take, oh, I bought a home and then deduct it off your taxes. Mm -hmm. There are certain fees and certain um, processes you have to go through with your mortgage mm -hmm. lender, and they, they usually tell you about those. Mm -hmm. um, there are uh, some through uh, Farm Bureau, I believe, if you're out in the country. Yep. So it, keep in mind, those, those are available to mm -hmm. you. Just ask the right questions going in. Mm -hmm. But we're at the end of the year. I don't know how many people are buying a house right now. Sure. but. It's just general good. Yeah. Okay. Good, good information. And then the, the last big one I've got is the student loan interest deduction. Yeah. And this is one that people think, oh, I've got to itemize for that. That's not true. Um, student loan interest deduction is actually what's called above the line, which means it's before you choose between the standard and the itemized deduction. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you your HSA and your... your um, your health insurance that comes off your W-2, mm -hmm. that, that, that those are above what are called above the line deductions before you get into the calculation of tax. Mm -hmm. So that the that is a good one that if you are not at your, your limit, you can possibly accelerate your student loan interest paid and get a higher deduction for that too. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a, a good, good one. That's one that I make sure to claim yeah. right. every year. And now that, that one's maxed of what you can write off, right? Like 2,500 mm -hmm. right. or something? Right. Yeah. Um, there's one, um, purchasing a car, your, what's it called? Exodus? No, that's not it. The excise. Tax, yeah. Which I guess you can write off fully, right? Maybe? We need to be, Check on that we, too. We gotta be careful. Okay. Um, because certain states and municipalities uh -huh. The way the way the IRS writes that is it has to be the tax has to be based off a certain way you tax the car. Okay. So I believe it's based on poundage. 
Um, if it's a flat rate, I think you may have problems, but okay. I'm, I think, believe the way Oklahoma does it is the way that is allowed. Okay. But you, every case is different. This is one of those, every time I have a client that yeah. comes in and wants to get this right off, I always have to look it up because every, uh, every county yeah. and every state does it different. So you gotta kinda be careful or you're gonna get yourself into audit risk. So uh, basically if you're planning on buying a car, it might be better to do it right at the end of the year, you think, instead of? Could be early at the beginning unless you're willing to not write that off if you can that's one of those following. weird conversations that same thing about having kids yeah like <laughs> if you have a kid in at the beginning of january yeah you're still having a kid but you happen yeah. to wait the whole year to claim the, yeah. the tax credit you're still you still have yeah. a kid you, you still have a car right mm -hmm. so right it is what it is what do i need to prepare to to be able to claim all these things in my tax i know the student loan they the student loan will send you the tax form that you need for filing. Right. Um, what about my other like larger purchases? Or if I want to itemize things, um, if I, uh, when I worked in the medical field, I could itemize my uh, buying scrubs and shoes and things like that that I used that my employer didn't compensate me for as business expenses. Um, so do I need to save receipts? Do I just need to how do I prove that I want to claim that? It would be receipts and documentation. Okay. Um, you brought up a good point, and that's the difference between being an independent contractor and being a W-2 employee. And a lot okay. of people get this wrong every year, and it poses a huge audit risk. If you are a 1099 employee, mm -hmm. if you are an independent contractor, mm -hmm. then you have to file what's called Schedule C, and you can claim those deductions like that. If you are a W-2 employee, and we're talking now unreimbursed business expenses. Mm -hmm. These are itemized costs that are have to be over 2% of your AGI. So these are Schedule A type deductions. Okay. With clothing, you have to be careful that the, the IRS says it has to be used only for the business purpose you bought them for. So let's say, for example, you bought some nice jeans you like and mm -hmm. say, oh, these are a business expense because I wear them to work. Mm -hmm. No, if you can wear them outside of work and look socially acceptable, you won't mm -hmm. be able to claim it. Okay. Um, so you kind of got to be careful. Okay. So if, you've, if you looked at the, the 1040, you yeah. have, remember what I was talking about, above the line mm -hmm. and below the line deductions. So a, your gross wages will be above the line, mm -hmm. subtracting any above the line deductions. So uh, health insurance through your, your employer, uh, HSA, mm -hmm. Um, retirement contributions that are non-Roth, so traditional deductions, uh, and you'll come down to a magic number called adjusted gross income, that mm -hmm. is AGI. That's okay. the number we're talking about. It'll be that number times 2%, and mm -hmm. any above 2% of that is what you can claim. Ah, so let's say, okay. for example, you have $1,500 in miscellaneous, actually qualify as miscellaneous unreimbursed business expenses, but you make $100,000 a year, mm -hmm that's below your 2000 mark, you won't be able to claim any. Yeah, okay. So so if you're in that position and it's, you know, Black Friday and you're in need of several things, it's probably gonna cost a thousand bucks, might be smarter to go ahead and do it at that time so that you can write off 500. If you're at 1500, you spend another thousand at the end of the year, putting you at 2500, you can write off 500 that next year. Am I, is that right? Did I just confuse everybody? No, it, it would be okay. the other way around. So if you <laughs> if you are at That's 15, why I don't do what you do. If you're at fifteen hundred and you come up to that two thousand, you're you're now breaking even to the two percent of your right. AGI. You have to spend above that. Yeah. So another if, thousand. If you're going to itemize, so you still have to have more than your standard deduction amount of okay. twelve thousand two hundred for single, twenty four for. So don't if you know you're taking the standard. Otherwise, you just right and. Most okay. people, I will tell you, most people are not going to itemize this year. Yeah. Okay. But if you're a 1099 employee and it's a business expense, yeah, that's a good thing. Okay. Um, so independent contractors have a certain benefit, but they also have to pay their own yeah. self-employment tax as well. That's another discussion for another day. But, okay. okay. We were talking about businesses, you know, as guardsmen, there's a lot of people who own their own mm -hmm. businesses on the side. Yep. Um, what are, what's some advice for them? At the end of the year, because uh, they can get whacked upside the head mm -hmm. in April, uh, 
or when it, well, I guess their stuff typically comes in a little bit later once they get everything. Anyway, help. How should, <laughs> how should they start preparing yeah. um, right. for getting, getting their employees, employees tax forms and stuff like that ready to go or any contractor forms that they have ready to go? Right. If you don't know, ask the questions because those forms are not um, self, they're, they're not very intuitive, I'll okay. tell you. You can figure it out if you do a lot of reading. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of software out there to help you, but if you have any questions, please ask because the IRS and or the state will find you mm -hmm. and they'll say, where's my money if you mm -hmm. do it wrong. Um, so it's all about what forms you have and all your documentation. So if you know, oh, I'm gonna be getting, I mean, let's just talk an easy form. If you know you've had, you've worked at three places and you're you're going to get three W-2s from those mm -hmm. places or three 1099s from those places. Mm -hmm. um, if you have, now on the other side of the coin, if we're talking about employees, you got to know these how many W-2s are going out the door or how many 1099s are going out the door. Um, there are deadlines to, to give them the, those forms before a certain date or you mm -hmm. getting in, in trouble as an employer. Um, so you just kind of got to be careful and kind of know your timelines. Okay. That's a lot. So have probably a, a business should have a CPA they, they or, a, could. or a, someone uh, that is, that's part of their job is bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, and a lot of businesses mm -hmm. that, that get to a certain sales threshold, mm -hmm. you know, the person who started the business usually is the, the operations guru mm -hmm. who, who knows how to run the business and you get to a certain point where, oh, they're not gonna have the time to manage the money as well. Yeah. So. Having somebody on the side do it, I mean, I've heard of everything from one spouse doing it and then the other spouse mm -hmm. running the finances and, mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. So having help is important. You don't want to slack on that and yeah. get busted later on. So we talked a lot about organizing and pulling receipts and getting everything ready. How necessary is that to do that now versus maybe April 1st or you know <laughs> April 14th? If we're talking receipts, see, that's necessary now. Um, a lot of times, especially with banks mm -hmm. waiting on 1099s or 1098s, they like to slow roll you. And that's the hard part of, of knowing what's coming, what, yeah. what, what do you have the, the right form now? Because sometimes the bank will issue you a, a form or like a, an investment broker. If you have um, stocks, bonds, and they're generating interests or dividends that are outside of a retirement account, because mm -hmm. those are not taxable, as you go forward. Mm -hmm. um, but if you, you have those outside of a retirement and they're accruing, sometimes they'll issue you one on February 15th and a month and a half later after you filed, they'll be like, oh, this is the corrected form and that oh. drives mm -hmm. CPAs crazy. Yeah. So it's like, oh no, okay, is it material to amend? Should we amend? That kind of stuff. So know what's coming and keep track of your forms. One good thing about that, I'll tell you, I tell all of my clients that have a business on the side that's running numbers that are, you know, somewhat material, mm -hmm. you know, you have a lot of money coming in, keep a separate bank account. Because in that case where you lose a receipt, mm -hmm. a lot of the time the IRS will come in and say, yeah, that looks like a $16,000 trailer. Yeah. Um, we'll accept that. So okay. it's all about audit risk, but if you're starting to blend it together with a personal account, that's when things get super muddy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. That's a, yeah, that's a good tip. Yeah, just keep it all separate. Filing early versus filing closer to April 15th, or does it matter? It does. Okay. Um, being, being in that tax field for, for a long time, I've seen a lot of identity theft, a lot okay. of fraud. So the way the IRS systems work is you, you file your taxes under your social security numbers, mm -hmm. you know, you, your spouse, if you've got one, and your dependents, because mm -hmm. you have to put their socials on there as well. Um, that it will register with the IRS servers and then they will it essentially locks it. So what will happen is if, you, if somebody on, let's say February 1st, decides to file your own return under your social, mm -hmm. they'll claim a re, your, your refund. If you've got one, they'll fake your numbers, they'll take your refund. And then when you go to try to file, it'll say, no, there's already been a file or a return filed on your behalf. Oh, and then that's when you wow. get into an identity theft situation of, oh, you gotta mail the forms into the IRS saying, yes, I've some, somebody has done this to me, give me a pen, I'm gonna refile. That's- What a headache. It's awful. Yeah. So earlier the better, okay. but don't mistake the fact that if you know you've got another 1098 or 1099 coming, 
wait on it, yeah. wait on it, and yeah. then file. So it's kind of this this juggling act. Yeah. If you're waiting to the very end, um, what what are the extension rules? Mm -hmm. And does everyone qualify for an extension? Um, is there a penalty with that? Everybody should qualify for an extension. Okay. Um, you have to when you file the extension form, you have still have to. Um, <clears throat> explain here's here's my income mm -hmm. here's what i've paid here's what taxes do come filing time mm -hmm. but keep in mind if you do not pay your taxes 100 percent up to the, the the filing date then you're still going to owe interest you're not okay. going to you're not going to incur a penalty for late filing but you could incur a penalty for not having paid it enough gotcha mm -hmm. so w there's a line on that extension form that gives you the the option of paying additional in with your extension and I highly recommend that and then potentially get some back if you didn't owe that right right if you miscalculate your AGI yeah. on yeah. the actual okay. extension form yes you can okay. you can do that when's a good time for them to start contacting like hey I've not received this yet like what are the dates like when should that start happening the majority of the dates are around the February 1st time frame okay um, except Where they should be receiving Right, so you should be receiving most of your of your forms by February first. Yeah. Okay. However, that's for like W twos mm -hmm. and and a lot of those types of forms. It's around that February time frame. However, if you have like um, an S corporation, mm -hmm. you your own or an S corp or an LLC or um, a yeah, you have any K one coming back to you. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a bunch of them out there. Mm -hmm. That, that deadline is actually later on for them to file their own corporate return mm -hmm. or uh, partnership return. So you're going to get that K-1 once they filed. So this is a good reason you'd want to file an extension yep. later on because your deadline may be almost exactly on the date that you're going to get your, your mm -hmm. K-1. And you don't want to rush around. You want to get it right. So mm -hmm. it's always better to be safe than sorry when it comes to extensions. Okay. You could even file one. February 1st and still come up to the April 15th deadline for an individual and they don't care. Yeah. They just want their the files, the, the return filed and the money to be settled. Okay. Okay. And so how do you recommend setting out a financial plan to start the new year out right? So that we're not at the end of next year yeah. getting ourselves in debt over Christmas yep. again. Mm -hmm. First, I would say set up your, your debt repayment plan because any good budget is going to have that debt repayment plan in it if you have debt. Okay. So the scary thing for people when it comes to, we talk about New Year's resolutions and mm -hmm. things like this, is, yeah, I want to pay down debt. But if you, you may not even know when your debt pays off. So figure out when, that, when is that magical date, yeah. and that will give you light at the end of the tunnel to say yes. It may be, you know, three, five years in the future, mm -hmm. ten years for student loans, whatever mm -hmm. that looks like, but at least you have a date. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a good starting point. And then um, I think we talked about a lot of this last time, but mm -hmm. retirement contributions, um, your health insurance, these things are good investments. Mm -hmm. I mean, invest in yourself and then you pay down the debt and all of this stuff going forward. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's really good. Is there... A method you would recommend for setting a budget or um, what are some of those attainable financial goals like, do, you, do you say okay and it's all dependent but in six months I hope to have $500 in a savings account yeah or, you know small goals like that sure it it's gonna vary from person to person but definitely goals like that are good um, if you you're if you're sitting on five thousand dollars debt, you could say, "Okay, I want a thousand paid by June." Mm -hmm. Or, um, of course, that's got to go with your. It's got to be reasonable, sure. right? Because if yeah, you yeah. if you see yourself failing come February, mm -hmm. it's it's like that that whole adage of, you know, January one. I'm gonna start going to the gym yeah. four days a week. Yeah. If you're not going any right now, yeah. that's not gonna be obtainable yeah. over the <laughs> long haul. So it's got to be reasonable. Yeah. You got to have benchmarks. It right. is reasonable because this New Year's champagne is telling me it's oh. reasonable. <laughs> oh man! Uh, too much public. I'm gonna do it tomorrow. Yeah. When it hits, you know, February, March time frame, and you feel yourself slipping into old habits, what are some things you can do to keep yourself motivated in in spending? I mean, going to the gym, it's nice to have somebody that's there and mm -hmm. 
they can help push you, but finances are a little different. Mm -hmm. So how do you stay motivated in staying on budget? Well, I, encouragement's still really good there too. Um, if you and your, your, your spouse, if you have one, are on the same page, you're going to a, um, you, you've got a vacation in mind you want in a year from now or two years from now, we want to hit that vacation benchmark. Yes, we're going to stick on this financial plan so we can go there or keep in mind of, um, I want to retire in this many years. Mm -hmm. Just keep thinking that. Remember your um, your goals and your, your priorities because that's what should drive you to begin with. If you don't have an end, you'll have a light at the end of the tunnel, mm -hmm. you, you're not going to stick with it to begin with. If you're planning more toward a, I'm not going to need this in the next <clears throat> five or ten years or whatever, you could just have it roll into an IRA or your retirement account. Another good one is as soon as you get a pay raise, take enact that one two percent out yep. and have it directly go through so it's not like oh I never saw the money to begin with yeah. so mm -hmm. that's also a good strategy yeah that's really good so I have a lot of TSP stuff set up just automatically yep. goes to retirement it's it's getting me money for later on in life but right. I never see it that's right any other anything else you think we should hit on that you think is important for this episode I know I mentioned this last time <clears throat> and I I, I tell everybody I know, financial literacy is extremely important. If you don't know something about your taxes going into the next fiscal year, ask about it. If you, um, I don't know, and that applies really to anything, mm -hmm. going into buying Christmas presents, I mean, just, just know how much money you have mm -hmm. and be diligent about it. Um, I know it's really hard. You want to buy that great thing for your kids or buy that great thing for your spouse because they deserve it and they they definitely probably do deserve it it's just it's it's always a hard time of year so just you shouldn't have to break your back for for something else yeah. you know you, you could break it literally by cleaning their garage right offer is open for all of you listeners out there <laughs> for my garage i'll accept that as a gift uh, we'll make sure that <laughs> your spouse gets a hold of this. Get the notes. Yeah. Get on it, John. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming back on. Um, we're, we're probably going to have you on again. Just yeah. Probably closer to tax season. Talk more heavy, more heavy. More the more heavy stuff. Talk more heavy stuff. Um, dive deeper on that. If if you're good. Absolutely. With that. Taxes. And yeah. Bailing ourselves out of taxes. Yeah. Paying versus getting. We're good. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. Sweet. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to this December episode of the OK Guard Show. We really appreciate it. Yeah. We did obviously fly it early. It's the fourth, um, but we did that because you know it's finances for the holidays, and if we put it out on the third Wednesday of the month, it's a little bit close. Unless you're like me, who sometimes does do the last minute shopping or making of a gift to save money anywho so um next month aka next year yes next we're month gonna see you next, next year. year which is crazy yeah. uh 2020 got my eye on you <laughs> see what i did there i did i, I, I did. was off the cuff whoa yeah wow i see it yeah it was good it was almost as good as the intro. I forgot what you did already, but it was good. Mm -hmm. I'll reference it. I'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, okay. But um, we have a few ideas for next month, and um, there are a lot. There's a lot we can do with January. So if you have any ideas that you want us to hit on, let us know. Contact us. Yeah. Brian, where can they find us? The show is for you. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Twitter. <laughs> you can find us on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, hashtag OKGuard mm -hmm. or at OKGuard. Yeah. Just Google o Oklahoma National Guard yeah. or OK Guard Show or whatever. You'll find us and shoot us a message, whatever. Comment on a post, whatever it may be. Right. We track all that. And by we, it's Sergeant Jones, who does a great job. Um, and get some ideas from you guys because, yeah, this, like Brian said, this is for you. And so uh, we look forward to continuing the podcast. We're approaching a year. March will be a year. That's right. So we'll That's do right. something special for that. Um, yeah. We That's appreciate everybody that has continued to listen to us, to view us, yeah. and that keeps our show going. So please whatever you'd like to hear. If you're in the military, if you're not in the military, if you want to know about the Oklahoma National Guard, mm -hmm. anything about the Guard, just let us know. We'll try and provide that information for you. Yeah. All right. 
Have a wonderful holiday. Have a great new year. Be safe. Do not drink and drive. It's not it's not worth it. Speaking of safety, yes. um, stay tuned for our safety message coming from our command group to include our adjutant general um, and a few other stars. Yeah. So a few yeah. of the stars from that command group. We're yeah. going to present our annual holiday safety message mm -hmm. here probably next week. We'll yep. have that running. So stay tuned for that. It'll be a lot more fun coming from the Oklahoma National Guard Public mm -hmm. Affairs Office. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. All right. See you next year. Bye. <laughs>The OK Guard Show is produced by the Oklahoma National Guard Public Affairs Office. Any mention of products or brands does not imply endorsement. All guests on the show are volunteers in an effort to inform and educate members of the Oklahoma National Guard, their families, retirees, potential recruits, and the community.